So John is showing us what's going on there. John, give us a shot of what it's like there. Um, this is the live press conference. It looks pretty sparse. Doesn't look like there's a ton of people there, although John is probably outside. Uh, outside, there we go. Okay, there's the press conference. Now, as I said, there would be, ten, would be tens of thousands of people inside the Oracle Open World Moscone Center uh, press conference or speech that Mark was going to give. Uh, you can see here that looks like there's maybe 50 to 100 people at the St. Regis, and so um, certainly uh, fewer people, but I have no doubt that Benioff is going to have um, a major message here uh, and probably going to take some shots at, uh, at Oracle and at Allison. They're going to continue their urinary Olympics, I have no doubt, I would predict. Um, you can see here John Furrier scanning the room uh, with the reporters. This is, uh, this, while it's smaller, there's a lot of important people there, we have no doubt, a lot of journalists, a lot of influencers are John Furrier on the ground. Uh, you can see the cameras. Um, very exciting happening. Uh, Larry Ellison canceled Mark Benioff. There's Mark Benioff right there. Canceled Benioff's uh, speech today. Uh, Benioff is getting ready to start, and we're just getting started right now. Can we get the sound in? This is, uh, Sorry. At 3.30 in the afternoon yesterday, we got a phone call uh, that we had been uh, canceled. And uh, at 3.30 in the afternoon yesterday, pulled this together. So I'd like to thank my team very much for doing this. Thank you. And uh, now Oracle is saying that uh, we can go on tomorrow at 8 a.m. Uh, when the show is over. So I want to thank Oracle for that. They also offered an 8 a.m. slot on Sunday at their new Alcatraz America's Cup facility. Thank you also, Oracle, for that opportunity. Um, I want to also acknowledge my mother who's here. Uh, she, can you stand up, please? Thank you. And she, she came because she is very upset with me that I pissed Larry off so badly that he canceled my keynote. So I want to apologize to my mother and to Larry. Uh, and uh, look, we're just excited to have you here. You know, this show, Oracle Open World, has been mostly been about this. It's been mostly been about um, a next generation mainframe computer. And the disappointment for me is that when I was at Oracle, when, when we used to put on Oracle Open World, Oracle Open World was about ideas and the industry and what was next happening you know, and what we could get excited about and motivated about. And, um, you know, it's just my personal philosophy that this is not the next great thing in our industry, that there is something really exciting happening in our industry, something amazing that is happening in our industry, something spectacular that we need to tap into, that we need to connect to, to transform our industry, to get away from proprietary hardware, to get away from the proprietary software, and to move into something that we call the cloud. And I think that that's the fundamental premise. I think that's why, indeed, we were canceled this morning. You know, that's not the message that Oracle wants. This is the message that Oracle wants. I respect that, you know, but we're not here to sell more computers this morning. That's not our premise. Our premise is to do something else, is to open a door for you, to show you a new world, to show you an opportunity to create a new industry, to create growth in our industry, create jobs in our industry, to create an economy in our industry. Because at this incredible time in the world, that's what we need. We need advancement. We need these new ideas. We need to get back to growth. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, before I start, uh, Salesforce.com is a publicly traded company. This is our new BAM safe harbor statement. And uh, you can see here, uh, this presentation is covered by the safe harbor. Benioff this is also on our website. For Ellison. 13 years now, we've been marching on stages and restaurants and venues all over the world with this message. The world is changing, that we can step away from the proprietariness, from the, from the, the, the lock-in, and that we can move to, move, move to a new open world, and we can do that through cloud computing. And the market has rapidly responded to us. Of course, we'll do more than $2 billion in revenue this year. We now have more than 100,000 customers who are using Salesforce's services worldwide. How many people here are Salesforce customers? Do we have any here? All right, we have a few. Fantastic. And we deliver now 36 billion transactions a quarter to our customers all over the world. 
And Forbes magazine just chose us as the number one most innovative company in the world. It's not just a new technology model to us. It's not just a new business model to us. It's also a new philanthropic model. And here at Oracle Open World, our booth is not a technology booth. It's a philanthropic booth. And we've been inviting Oracle Open World attendees to do something which is to participate in our philanthropy, to join us, and to help to build uh, a better world right there at Oracle Open World. And that this model of that you can take 1% of your equity, 1% of your time, and 1% of your profits, and today we run uh, over 10,000 nonprofits for free, we deliver hundreds of thousands of hours of community service, and we've given away more than $24 million in grants. Okay, uh, next slide, please. <laughs> oh, sorry, I have a quick Look, we have strong growth in this industry in the cloud. That's why the cloud is so important. You look at companies like Apple, like Amazon, like Google, Google Groupon, Salesforce, Facebook, we're creating jobs, we're creating new ideas, we're creating innovation. And that's empirical. And that's what I love about my job. What I love about my job is that when you create this new technology, when the, you create this new advancement, our industry moves forward. You know, we moved from the mainframes led by Thomas Watson, and then we moved into uh, the mini computers led by Ken Olson at DEC. And then we moved into PCs with Bill Gates. And then we've moved into cloud computing, really led by Google and Larry and Sergey, and then we were able to move into the mobile cloud computing by the really great Steve Jobs. Amazing. And now we're being ushered into an amazing new era by Mark Zuckerberg. Incredible, a social revolution. It's a bigger, more exciting opportunity than we have ever seen in our industry before. And this social revolution is actually how our team, and I want to talk about that today, and I've change my keynote just to talk about this, if you want to call this a keynote. I want to change my keynote to talk about how we were able to use this new technology to turn on a dime yesterday starting at 3.30 to get this facility, to put this together, to get the word out, to let all of you know that this is what's happening right now. I don't think we could have done that two years ago or three years ago or five years ago, but we can do it today. And it's that same technology that's bringing down countries in the Middle East. You look at what happened in Tunisia. You look at, what, you look at what's happened in Egypt. You look at what's happened in Israel. You even look at what's happening now on Wall Street. You know, this is the power of the social media. This is the power of the social technology. It's the social technology that is shaking our industry at a core. And it's our opportunity to grab that social technology and transform our own lives and our own businesses and our own industry to create something new. Forbes magazine's cover story this week is all about that. It's not about hard power. It's not about soft power. It's about social power. And it's really about that you have to listen to customers and employees in a whole new way. And if you are not listening to your customers and employees, if you are not paying attention to what's going on with them, then you will, you will face what HP has faced. You will face what Netflix has has faced over the last several weeks. We've all seen that. You look at the precipitous decline in their equity value at Netflix right after the CEO issued his blog. And 27,000 of his customers went to the blog to comment on it, drove his stock price down, and transformed his industry and his company in a day. That's social power. And that's what we can do in our industry today. This so Social revolution is changing all of our lives. How many people in this restaurant are on Facebook or Twitter? Raise your hand. Everybody. It's amazing. You know, 22% of our time today, of internet time, is social. And these social networks are really grabbing the internet, they're shrinking the internet, they're transforming user behavior. We can see that. We can see the web is shrinking. It's being absorbed by great companies like Facebook. We're going to hear in a few minutes from Facebook's chief information officer who's here today to support us, Tim Campos. And we're going to hear how he has been able to take this technology to transform the world. We're spending four hours a month on Facebook. The web is dying. 
Four hours a month social networks on are Facebook. Taking over. The web is dying. And it's accompanied by networks are taking tangent. over. And in, in it's accompanied by in tangent. Synergy with mobility. In, an incredible synergy with mobility. Look at this. We're spending more time on our mobile devices accessing the web. More time. We just had an interruption in the feed. We'll get it right back. We are live from Oracle Open World 2011. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org with SiliconAngle.com. Live coverage, breaking news. Mark Benioff at Oracle we Open see World this. was kicked off. We the see program. a dramatic shift to mobility. Moved. A dramatic shift to smartphones, to tablets. Silicon and PCs Angle's are dying coverage. off, and notebooks are dying off, and we get this next generation of devices. This is what's happening in our industry. This is what's exciting. This is the change. This is the transformation that we need. The social technology, the mobile technology, it's the cloud technology. This is a social revolution and it's also about developers. How many people here have bought an app on Apple's App Store? Raise your hand. Of course, everybody. But look at this. The Android App Store, the Apple App Store, the Facebook apps. Millions of apps emerging in marketplaces and in next generation technologies and in new platforms. This is a social revolution and it's not just about the consumer. It's not just about the consumer, it is about enterprise. And it's about enterprise and you look at CIOs embracing this and saying we want this. We want this change, we want this transformation. But is that what we're hearing at this conference? Are we hearing that the future of our industry is social, that the future of our industry is mobile? that the future of our industry is cloud, I suggest to you, it's a contrarian position. To you, it's a contrarian it's a position, position that caused the cancelling of the keynote. Position that caused that the cancelling of the keynote. That it's these very forces, these very forces, that you can be Mubarak and say it doesn't exist. You know? You can say it doesn't exist. You can say we don't want to hear about it. But the reality is, the people now have an alternative way of communicating. You don't have to have the formal Oracle Open World communication to reorganize in a few hours. You can use social media. That's how you all got here, right? How many people here found out about this through social media? Raise your hands. Of course, everybody. But this social Revolution has created a social divide. And that's what I'm spending all my time thinking about. How can I help my customers do this, what we just did, create demand, create change, create transformation using these tools. This social divide has to be solved because there are still many people at Oracle Open World who didn't even know that this happened. They're still dealing in companies who aren't on social networks, but less and less, less and less, because import, customers are going social, employees are going social, but are our companies going social? Are enterprise going social? As I travel around the world, and right after this keynote, I'm flying today to Ohio to deliver a keynote tomorrow. And my message again is we have these tools to now create demand, create growth, create jobs. We can change. We can advance our industry. But how do you do it? And that's what we have been spending our time thinking about. How do we do it? And we put that philosophy into action yesterday at 3.30. And we said, yes, we can do it. We can create this at the Ami restaurant. We can move the keynote. It doesn't matter what Oracle thinks. We can create it. We can change. We can advance. And let me tell you the few things that we did to make that happen. We took our three-step formula for creating a social enterprise and we put it into place. We know that step one is creating that customer social profile. We keep track of what our customers' handles are and we're monitoring them on Facebook and on Twitter, where most of you found out about this. We're not just keeping track of their name and address and phone number, we're able to rapidly respond. We're keeping track of things that they're saying about us in the public forum and we're able to communicate back out to them. I want to show you that today. And then all of our employees are on a private social network called Chatter. 
I think a lot of you have heard about Chatter because we have over 100,000 live Chatter networks, and we were able to immediately collaborate and put these tools into action and say, let's get posters made. Let's get, let's get the AV vendor set up. You know, let's, let's make the changes so that we can get all of our employees coordinated. It was almost the end of the workday. It didn't matter. Because with Chatter and with an employee social network, we were able to align everybody together. We were able to move more rapidly. And then three, we were able to reach out to our customers through customer social networks and through our product social networks and say, wow, are we going to fill an empty restaurant? No, because it's not just, by the way, here in our restaurant. I'm sure you know we have a line of about 1,000 people down the block who couldn't get in here. We were able to put this into action. Because we have rewritten our architecture, we have rewritten our product to reflect this new world. We created a new service called data.com so that we can keep track of everybody's current information. We created our own database as a service, database.com. And since our Oracle, and since, and since we announced it a year ago at our Dreamforce conference, and we brought it live, database.com now has 5,000 databases that it's managing for customers all over the world, just in the past few weeks since it went live at uh, Dreamforce. And then we built application development and deployment environments like force.com, or what we just announced at the F8 conference with Facebook, Heroku, where we've now seen hundreds of thousands of new applications getting built on this architecture. We now have about 370,000 applications now on Heroku. Incredible advancement since Facebook has made changes to more closely align with the platform. And then our sales cloud, our service cloud, our Radian 6, our marketing cloud, our app exchange, our social layer. And then we wrote an HTML5 user interface so that our customers can access our technology wherever it is, on their iPads, on their iPhones, and the RESTful APIs to get all the access. But all of it is built. This whole architecture is built on the cloud. It's built on a cloud that is fast, it is easy, it is open, it is for everyone, it is democratic, it's portable, it doesn't lock you in. And you build your applications with Facebook, with Ruby on Rails, and you don't like our cloud, you can go to another cloud. It is not proprietary, it's open. But that's not the message of this show. The message of this show is proprietary hardware and software is the future. And our message as we go around the world is, beware of that false cloud. Beware of the false cloud because it is not efficient, it is not democratic, it is not economical, it is not environmental, it is not open. We have the opportunity to create a new industry that's not proprietary, that's based on cloud computing. And last year at Oracle Open World, at least the opening keynote, they said, well, we actually have cloud computing too. We haven't even heard that here today. That's amazing. And over the last six months, as I've gone around the world, and this is my travel schedule, and I've done presentations in restaurants like this all over the world. No, this is my only restaurant, ladies and gentlemen, that I do. <laughs> this is my only restaurant. As I've done presentations in places like this all over the world, this is what I keep hearing from customers, that they want to change, they want to transform, they want to advance, and they recognize that there is a new world. You know, I recently took a trip to Boston to do a CloudForce presentation, and I was on the uh, plane, and I was tweeting, and I was in my Facebook and saying, hey, I'm going to Boston, I'm going to my favorite hotel, I'm so excited, I love this restaurant, I want to get a table there, hey, I love this show in Boston, I'm going to get seats there, this is how I like my room, I just can't wait to get to Boston, to get in this great hotel, and to do the show. And an amazing thing happened. I got to Boston, I got to the show. I walk into the hotel, they said, Mr. Benioff, we've been following you on Twitter, we've been following you on Facebook, thank you. We got you your favorite table at the restaurant. We got you your, the best seats at the theater. We, got, we put your room together exactly as you like it. We put the smart water in your refrigerator. You are set. No, that is not what happened. For those of you who are traveling here, you know what happened. I got to the hotel, I got to the front counter, they said, here's your keys. I don't even know if they knew my name. Because we know that the opportunity to know more about our customers is greater than ever before. 
that our opportunity to rebuild our front office systems, it doesn't matter what industry we're in, we can create a new way of doing business. We can delight customers in a whole new way. We can delight customers in a whole new way. That's what we tried to do, by the way, with this presentation today. We want to delight you in a whole new way. That's why we got out there on the network. Because, as Mark Zuckerberg has now created this incredible new word, like, that delighting customers is knowing who they are and what they like. And is that what happened yesterday when Larry canceled our keynote? You know, it said, okay, oh, now you can go on, you know, Thursday at 6 when everybody is gone. You know, is that what customers like? I don't think so. I don't think that he was in touch with the sentiment of the audience. I don't think it creates goodwill. I don't think it creates positivity. I don't think it creates good energy. I don't think it's good for the brand. Instead, what can we do? We can create a better relationship with our customers. We can always offer another opinion. We can always bring in a contrarian view. And that's the three steps to creating this social enterprise. Creating that social enterprise profile, creating the employee social network, and the customer and product social network. That's how all of you got here. That's what we do every day. That's what we're training our customers to do. Those are the technologies and the solutions. We're not selling a proprietary mainframe. We are selling a new way of business, a new philosophy. And I want to talk about that first step, creating that customer social profile, because we know that those vendors of ours, they need to know more about us than ever before. And that's why we created database.com. It was a database for a new social enterprise. I want to show you some of that. I want to start talking to you now about technology. I want to show you technology. I want to show you customer advancements. I want to give my, my voice a, a, a quick break. I want to just go to one of our customers for the next 60 seconds, Burberry, where we're working on putting the social enterprise in place for them worldwide. And Angela Ahrens, who was on CNBC yesterday, here is what she has to say about this philosophy. The faster we move forward, it becomes Angle even live, more critical to look back and never Benioff forget who we are and never forget where we came from and, moved across and the street, what made this brand by Oracle. such a great global Listen luxury in. brand today. I run the company with Christopher Bailey, our chief creative officer. We had a vision, and the vision was to be the first company who was fully digital end-to-end. -end. We are partnering with Salesforce to now take that vision and build this social enterprise. The experience would be that a customer would have total access to Burberry across any device, anywhere, and they would get exactly the same feeling of the brand, feeling of the culture, regardless of where, when, how they were accessing the brand. Everyone now can come into Burberry world and understand the journey and mission that Burberry is on. And to any CEO who's skeptical at all, you have to. You have to create a social enterprise today. You have to be totally connected with everyone who touches your brand. If you don't do that, I, I don't know what your business model is in five years. So that's what we've been doing with Burberry. We want to create a social enterprise for them. We want to create a social enterprise for you. We want to create a social enterprise for our 100,000 customers and more around the world. We want to show them these tools. With Burberry, we're showing them how to use Chatter, how to connect their stores, how to connect their SAP back office applications. We're showing them how to connect into their Facebook page or their Twitter and to create these social enterprise profiles and bring in their investors and their stakeholders and everybody necessary to create a Burberry social enterprise. And that power of creating that social enterprise profile is then complemented by how do we mobilize all of our employees? We've demonstrated we can do it. 
Now we want to show our customers how they can do it. There has never been a better way, a faster way, an easier way to collaborate in the enterprise. Pioneered by Facebook, we need a Facebook for the enterprise. Why do I know more about these strangers on my Facebook page and on my Twitter page than about my own employees, about my own friends, and in many cases, my own family? It's the nature of the technology that's so amazing. So how do we put that in place so that we can have that collaborative power right inside, right inside our companies? And that's why we've been so excited to see so many companies now embrace this 100,000 paying Salesforce Chatter customers. In about a year, we've seen Chatter become the leader in these employee social networks with profiles and status updates, all the things they expect on Facebook, but deeply integrated into their business processes with the security and scalability and trust that they expect from us. And I want to show you that now, and I've asked our chief marketing officer to join me up here. Uh, Craig Swenson is our chief marketing. Would you give him a round of applause for coming out here this morning? <laughs> Craig, welcome. Great to have Thanks, you. Mark. Thanks, Mark. So we wanted to give you a quick demonstration of this latest technology, social collaboration for the enterprise, which is, of course, Salesforce Chatter. So what you're seeing on the screen right now, many of you who have seen this who are Salesforce customers in the room, this is the Salesforce app. This is the employee social network inside of a company. You can see in the upper right-hand portion of the screen, we're in the Chatter app for starters, and that means all the core functions of, of social networking are represented, the profiles, the feeds, and the filters, and of course, the basis of every social enterprise is right here the user profile. And so right inside of your company, right here inside of Chatter, you can see that the user pro profile, it looks and feels like Facebook, but it's private and secure for your company. And one of the really cool things is, is that with Chatter, in employee social networking, not only can you follow the activity of colleagues around your company. So for example, not only do you have this private and secure social network inside of your, inside of your enterprise, following your colleagues' activity, but it's deeply integrated with all of the business processes and the data. So you can follow your customer accounts, or you can follow your big deals, or you can follow your critical support cases. And then what happens is that everything you've registered interest for, everything that's relevant to you inside of the company, it streams to you in real time right here inside of your chatter feed. This is like the news feed for you, personalized for you for your company. So let me give you a couple examples. Right here at the top of the screen, you can see that people are working together on an account plan. And this is not just a sales rep and a, and, and a sales engineer. These, these are people across the company. Check out right below this. One of the amazing things that we've seen with our 100,000 chatter networks is that different departments are working together in entirely new ways. This is a great example of sales and marketing, working together on maybe even a YouTube campaign. Embedded video right here inside of the chatter feed. Now organizations can work together socially instead of being separated like maybe they would be with the org chart. One of the really cool use cases is executives at meetings are in touch with people back at headquarters. So people back at headquarters can be streaming information back to those executives and making them more effective right here in the sales meeting. Even the entire system is open. And that means that everything you're seeing here on the screen, nothing is proprietary and closed. Third-party systems, an Oracle financial system, can stream information right here into the chatter feed, and it's deeply integrated with the Salesforce. Okay, we're watching the Mark Benioff keynote, salesforce.com. Uh, as you know by now, uh, Mark Benioff tweeted out last night, Larry has canceled my keynote. Uh, meet me at the St. Regis. That's who they are. It looks like about 50 to 100 reporters and journalists and, and customers there. Uh, John Furrier on the ground. Um, Benioff started off, he apologized to Larry Ellison. He said, uh, I want to apologize to Larry. Um, it was sort of a semi-apology. Yeah, it was sort of a lightweight apology. But then he went on to say that uh, Oracle Open World is all about the next generation mainframe computer. Um, to me, Benioff said, this is not the next great thing. Um, we want to get away, he said, from proprietary hardware and software. Uh, we want to move into the cloud. Uh, we are not here to sell more traditional hardware and software and computers. Not here to sell more computers, is what he said. We're here to create growth. We're here to create jobs. That was the Benioff message to the audience. He said, we want to move away from lock-in. We want to move to the cloud. And then he talked about the waves in the industry. He talked about how the mini-computer, um, and he associated that with the industry leaders, how the mini-computer uh, was brought, ushered in by Ken Olson in the PC era by Bill Gates and the cloud era by 
by, by Sergey and Larry, and, and then the mobile by Steve Jobs, and now he's saying the social enterprise is being, the social enterprise essentially being catalyzed by Mark Zuckerberg uh, and Facebook. And he talked about the social enterprise, and the time is now to build the social enterprise, and he said that's what Salesforce is doing with its 100,000 plus customers. John Furrier's on the ground. Um, he's been tweeting out, uh, he's, he said he was drinking the Kool-Aid of the social media piece, and what he means by that is, you know what, uh, essentially Larry Ellison canceled Mar uh, Mark Benioff's keynote. Technically he moved it to 8 a.m. the next day on Thursday, but nobody wants to do that, so effectively he canceled it. What Furrier means by that is that Benioff said, you know what, I don't care. We're going to reach as many people, if not more, with social media. Just like we do here on theCUBE, we tend to reach 10 times the number of people who are at the live event. So even though Benioff was addressing maybe you know, one one hundredth of the number of people that he would have live at Oracle Open World, he's got many, many more people through the social networks. We've got a big audience watching here. Um, and this will be documented for all time, again, using social media. That's really what, uh, what Furrier meant. I know, Mark, you've been following. Mark Risen Hopkins is joining me. Mark, you've been following all the action, all the tweets. Uh, what's your angle on this? But the cool thing is, we're doing Actually, uh, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, some of the, the stuff that I've been seeing, and, and we miss this perspective personally because we were at VMworld this year uh, during Dreamforce, but uh, like, uh, Dennis Howlett says this is almost a, a direct one for one minus the, the, the Larry Ellison jabs for his Dreamforce keynote. Uh, but still interesting stuff here. Uh, is, are, you, are you following the OO, uh, Oracle Open World hashtag? Or yeah, is but I'm also. Well, no, I'm also following just some selected people uh, like, uh, like our Wikibon and uh, SiliconANGLE analysts and writers here. Uh, and uh, one of the things that uh, you and I missed, but uh, Alex Williams and Clint Finley both caught was a veiled Mubarak reference of him being kicked out and comparing himself to uh, Mubarak. That was, I thought that was pretty I funny. Fail on that one. Yeah, uh, so John has been uh, sending, I mean, he, he can't speak during the keynote, he's up there on the front row, uh, but as soon as the, uh, the, uh, the, the sales and demonstrations are done, he's gonna try to break away. But uh, Mark is evangelizing the social movement, uh, you know, open and not proprietary. These are, these are the things that uh, Mark Benioff is focusing on, which is, you know, pretty good counterpoint to the, uh, the whole Oracle messaging, definitely. So um, one, of, one of John's tweets was quite interesting. Is the key stumbling block of social is algorithms for filtering and trust models. Um, and, you know, you know, maybe the social enterprise is this sort of behind the firewall, um, type of thing where you can in engender trust, but I think, you know, Furrier's onto something here. Um, the way Benioff is describing the social enterprise, it, it seems, you know, very um, brute force. Yes. And I think what Furrier's talking about is, you know, what's lacking is algorithms to essentially engender trust and influence mm -hmm. uh, the people that you want to uh, be social with that you might not know. Right. Uh, and, and I know that's something that John has been working on and, and SiliconANGLE has a big data project going on. So I think that's what, really what he's alluding to there. So Benioff is really just hitting all the points that uh, Larry Ellison should have done in his opening keynote. You know, the, the themes of what, what can you do with big data? That, that example where he spent, you know, about a minute and a half describing his check-in process coming in from the trip and all the things that the, uh, the, the hotel clerk should have known about him, right? You know? What, what is it that we can do with, uh, you know, some of our data analysis? We can, we can identify key segments of our audience. Well, that's something that, uh, you know, with the power of Salesforce and other enterprise tools, but, you know, Benny, I was talking about Salesforce specifically, you can, you can create addressable uh, customer segments and know everything you need to know to make a seamless customer service experience. So we're watching uh, the live keynote here. It's, it's, it's Demo City right now. We've got the... Uh, the, the CMO of Salesforce on basically you know, giving some examples of the social enterprise and what uh, these guys are doing. You know, essentially the vision is to be able to connect with, them, with, with, with uh, people within your company from any device, anywhere, anytime. And um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting what Benioff gave that example when he's flying to Boston, I want my favorite room, my favorite you know, table, and he got there and everybody had it already. Well, of course they didn't. Right. Um, you know, because people are busy, they can't, 
sit around watching Twitter all day, they got customers to check in. So maybe there's another uh, uh, missing link here, Mark. What do you think, right? I mean, you can't expect everybody in the hotel to be sitting there following Benioff's tweets. Right. Yeah, that's not a but practical what, But what you can do is uh, automate that. Right? Ah, now you're talking. The right. data is all out there. Right. Use the data. Right. Hey, we've got a a, a pretty high profile guest coming yeah. in. If your if your follow count is over, you know, fifty thousand, I think that qualifies as high profile. Well, if your name is Benioff or Dell, yeah, big CEOs who tend to, to do a lot of tweeting. If the if the name matches up with a credit card that is on file that spent you know in excess of a hundred grand yeah. at your hotel, maybe you want to pay attention. Yeah, to that. what's the cost of a of a of a false positive there? Very very low. Right. Um, or somebody named Dell could get a great room, and so so what? You know, yeah. it makes them happy. They'll be back if, even if it's not Michael Dell. <laughs> So Mark Benioff's back on. Why don't we go to, uh, to Mark and hear what he has to say. In the Midwest. And I believe in that. And we've worked very closely with, with CNBC and with their parent company, NBC Universal, to help them create growth. And with their new partner, Com their new parent, Comcast, today for NBC Universal, and one of the reasons that we've been asked to come to the conference tomorrow and to present tomorrow morning is we're managing two million ad spots a year using this technology with NBC Universal. We've created that customer social profile. We've shortened their sales cycles, and we've given them a 300% return on their investment. They want to profile that to their customers. And I thought I would show you the video that we've put together for them for tomorrow for the CNBC conference so that you could see how CNBC is 